Welcome, Jeff. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm very excited on a personal level and for our listeners. So I'd really like to start with, what do you think play is? What's your definition of play? Yes, that's a great question. Uh, I define play as any act that has no result, that actually brings you fully present in the moment where you don't have anxiety about the future, you don't have uh, regrets about the past, and you're just fully in flow. And you know you're at play when you feel very joyful and you actually don't recognize time. It's almost like it disappears. So that's when I believe people are in play. And you can be in play doing many different things from reading to walking to some creativity, but whatever that brings you fully present where you almost forget about time. Beautiful. Okay, great. And I know there's a lot of research about this, but I was hoping you could share, why do we need play? Um, there's so many different reasons why. First, for survival. I think a lot of people don't realize the amount that animals play, especially when they're younger, as a way to like practice for like how to survive, how to navigate. And especially even now during these crazy chaotic times, play is what you need to embrace in order to deal with all the chaos, right? I think a lot of times adults get so focused on expectations and expectations many times are the thief of joy. But when you're able to embody that play-oriented, playful, childlike, curious mind space, you're able to see so many more opportunities that you otherwise would never get a chance to see. In addition to that, you get, you know, um, as I think it was uh, the person that wrote uh, Belong, uh, Nadia Agarwal, I believe her name was, but she had this a term where she referred to it as dose. You get a dose every time you get play because you get dopamine, you get oxytocin, you get serotonin, and you get endorphins. So you're getting all these different feelings from it, uh, which are really important. And um, even the doctor play, Stuart Brown says, like, the opposite of play is depression. So you really do want to take time in order to play. I agree. I very much agree. Now, having said that, I will admit, and many of my listeners know, I'm having trouble figuring out how to play or how to have fun, which, you know, I associate play with fun in a lot of ways. But under these conditions where you can't hang out with the people you want to hang out with, or you can't go to the amusement park, or you can't do some of the things that maybe in the past counted as play, do you have any suggestions for us of how yeah, we can play? Absolutely. First, I think, um, and I learned this uh, coaching someone recently where Look at what you do on a given day or maybe even a given week, and you might already be doing play that you didn't realize you were actually doing. I, I was talking once with a lawyer, and she was just like, yeah, I don't play enough. Um, and I was like, what do you do? And she's like, well, I work with a lot of you know, agencies and organizations, and I help people that almost hate each other get along with each other. And I was like, oh, that's super interesting. And then as we dove more into it, we found out that was her play. So I think there's the first part of recognizing there's probably play you're already doing, right? Okay. Second, then I love to do this thing. I do this with my uh, colleague, Lauren. Um, we run a workshop called Your Future is Where Your Fun Is. And the whole process of that, or of that uh, workshop is to explore your play core values. What did you love to do as a child? And based off of that, what were your core values? So I loved, um, well, I'll give Lauren's example. She loved playing sardines, which was opposite hide and seek. And as we looked at her core values, we realized creativity, connection, and collaboration were really important values of hers when it comes to play. So then we brainstormed a bunch of different um, games and things she could do that cover creativity, connection, and collaboration. So you could have your friends be like, I need to do these things more. And you reach out to your friends and you're like, how can you help me? Give me some ideas, brainstorm with me. Also, they, you could also ask them this question. When was the last time you saw me happy? When was the last time you saw me playful? When was the last time you saw me full of joy? What was I doing? Okay, how can we do this even during quarantine, even during these COVID times? What is another creative way of doing this? I was coaching someone recently that 
Um, she loves to travel. Travel is her thing. She can't travel right now. There's no way if she, if she can travel. But she instead joined all these travel organizations and is meeting all of these fascinating people that are from all over the world that also love travel. And right now she feels like she's traveling, even in this situation. So there's many different ways of seeing it. You just have to be creative. And then you just have to ask your friends for help to help you play more. Okay, great. I will definitely give it a try. I noticed on your website, you have a page that's called Positive Psychology Playlist. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so I got my positive psychology uh, education through the, um, the CAP program, which is the Flourishing Center program run by Amelia. Um, I, for, I can't pronounce her last name, but it's a phenomenal. She's amazing. Amelia of the Flourishing Center. Um, and uh, one of the last things I created right before I ended uh, that educational uh, workshop or, or seminar was I created a positive psychology playlist where I took actual uh, positive psychology uh, programs or aspects of positive psychology. And then I explored what type of play might go with this. Because I think a lot of times you know, even if you study positive psychology, you're like, oh, well, I want to savor more. How do I savor more? But then they, there's no one that really explains like what you could actually do. So, you know, I was just like, well, let's explore how you, how one could savor more. Oh, you could do something like we're going to chase sunsets and the whole week you're going to chase sunsets, whether you're going to get in your car and drive to go find a sunset, or you're going to wake up really early in the morning and watch every sunrise. Because what's fascinating about savoring is the better you get at it, the better you're able to literally slow down time in your mind. And you start to not only savor sunrises and sunsets more, but you begin to savor other things more. You begin to enjoy your meals more because you're, everything is taking a longer period of time because you're slowing down. And you can feel that, especially when you travel and you're like, ah, oh, I don't have any responsibilities. Oh. So I, I wanted to create like a playlist of like, how do we explore that, right? What are the things that we can do? Same thing with, you know, your fixed mindset versus your growth mindset. Like, what is something you can do from, um, you know, taking yourself outside of your comfort zone? It's just like, let me identify one way in which I have a fixed mindset, and then let me have my friends help me break out of that. Like, while well, I'm not good at drawing, that's my fixed mindset. Well, we're going to draw. Well, I can't see you face to face. Well, then let's hop on a Zoom and you being a drawer and I not knowing how to draw, we're going to draw together and then I'm going to show it to you. So like there's just thing, they're just like lovely fun games you can do, right? You, you can always do something that like really challenges what's possible. Great. Okay. We'll put that link in our blog that goes with the podcast and we'll put it on the website so people can find you. That's fantastic. So I know you did live workshops and trainings and things like that in your role with Rediscover Your Play, the name of your organization. And I'm wondering how have you been affected now with, I mean, I'm assuming you're restricted somewhat at least. Yeah. You, yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's interesting. It's, it's both been amazing and hard, right? Because so it's amazing in the sense of, of I can run workshops where places I was not even thinking of running them, right? So like I've run two workshops in Canada. Did I ever think I was going to run them in Canada? No. So that's super cool, right? But it's hard in the sense of like, how do you translate play or any workshop virtually? And that's really um, been really interesting and challenging and sometimes frustrating, but amazing when you're able to like connect virtually with people. And it's been super cool when, you know, through a lot of iterations and a lot of mistakes, I've been able to figure it out and really like get people to be like, oh my gosh, I'm playing like a kid again, you know?